You can ask anybody in the Miami Dolphins locker room who had John Martin's back the absolute most, and they'll undoubtedly tell you me. John never showed signs that football was getting to him, um, the, the locker room was getting to him. You're saying you don't know what led to this. Uh, your teammates are saying we don't know. His side has clearly said we do know, mm -hmm. okay? And there's bullying involved. There was a voice message left. I'm gonna read it to you. You, you did leave this voice message. Yes, I did leave this voice message. And it's, hey, what's up, you half and word piece of black. I saw you on Twitter. You've been training 10 weeks. I want to blank in your mouth. I'm gonna slap your blank mouth. Going to slap your real mother across the face. Laughter. You're still a rookie. I will kill you. You hear that. Going back to that now, do you look at that and say, I left that for Jonathan Martin? When I see that voicemail, when I see those words come up across the screen, uh, I'm embarrassed by it. I'm embarrassed by my actions. But what I want people to know is the way Jonathan and the rest of the offensive line and how our teammates, how we communicate, it's vulgar. It's, it's not right. When the words are put in the context, I understand why a lot of eyebrows get raised, but people don't know how John and I communicate to one another. But there's one thing of saying that. Another thing, with a white man using the N-word. Well, and that's... How do, you, how do you tell America, how do you expect anybody in America to believe you're not a racist? Right, I'm not a racist. And to judge me by that one word is wrong. In no way, shape, or form is it ever acceptable for me to use that word, even if it's friend to friend, on a voicemail. How much in today's locker room is it thrown around by African Americans and white players? Uh, it's thrown around a lot. It's, uh, it's a word that um, I've heard John use a lot. Not saying it's right for when I did it in the voicemail, but there's a lot of colorful wor words thrown around in the locker room that we don't use in everyday life. The fact of the matter remains, though, that that voicemail was left on a private voicemail for my friend, and it was a joke. Right, wrong, or indifferent, because of all this, you've become the face of bullying in America. Somebody thinks of a bully, they think of Richie Incognito. This isn't an issue about bullying. This is an issue of mine and John's relationship where I may, I, I've, I've taken stuff too far and I didn't know it was hurting him. Did Jonathan Martin overreact or Jonathan was hurting that much? I can't sit here and tell you who overreacted, who did what. I can just, I, I can just sit here and be accountable for my actions. And my actions were coming from a place of love. No matter how bad and how vulgar it sounds, um, that's how we communicate. That's how our friendship was. And it, th those are the facts, and that's how, what I'm accountable for. You're telling me there wasn't any signs going into that? You know, um, as the leader, as his best friend on the team, that's what has, has me miffed, how I miss this. And I never saw it. I never saw it coming. There's so many subplots in this. How much has come out where you've looked at it and said, that's not even close? I think the whole thing I've been sitting there saying, that's not even close. It sounds terrible. It sounds, when, when it's on the screen, it sounds like I'm a racist pig. It sounds like I'm a meathead. It sounds a lot of things that it's not. And I wanted to clear the air just by saying I'm a good person. You obviously, you've had a, a very checkered history. Mm -hmm. From way back in college all the way up to recently with the last year with the incident of the golf course. You're sitting up here and you're saying, hey, I'm a good guy. It's, it's difficult for, I think, America to grasp that when all they see are the, the episodes. Right, no question. And if you, go, if you go by just all the knucklehead stuff that I've pulled in the past, done in the past, you're sitting in your home and you're thinking, this guy's a loose cannon, this guy's a terrible person, this guy's a racist, when that couldn't be farther from the truth. If I was a racist and I was bullying John Martin, when the press went in there and asked them questions, that locker room would have said, listen, we, we saw this, we saw that. I'm proud of my guys for having my back and telling the truth, but the fact of the matter is, when John left the team on Monday, we played a game on Thursday. I spoke with John on Friday. But you, I don't, you spoke with him? I, I texted with him. I, I text message, text messages. I just spoke with him through text message, and he texted me and said, "I don't blame you guys. I blame some stuff in the locker room. I blame the culture. I blame, I blame what was going on around me." And. When all this stuff got going and swirling and bullying got attached to it and my name got attached to it, I just texted him as a friend and was like, what's up with this man? And he said, it's not coming from me. I haven't said anything to anybody. And I'm like, you know, okay. Are these be texts you'd be willing to share? No question. 
I'll give you, after this interview, I'll give you my phone and we'll walk through all these texts. Okay. And I will show you the framework of a friendship. If Jonathan Martin was sitting right here next to you, what would you say to him? Uh, I think, honestly, I, I think I'd give him a big hug right now because we've been through so much and I'd just be like, dude, what's going on? Why didn't you come to me? If he were to say, listen, you took it way too far. You hurt me. I, you know, I would, I would just apologize and explain to him exactly what I explained to you. And I apologize to his family that they, 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 they took it as, as malicious, but um, I, never, I, never, I never meant it that way.